everyone. Greetings of the day. I am Priyanjali from Beautiful Spotless Skin Team. I'm sure all of you must be keeping good health. To look beautiful and smart all times is quest of humans, right from the beginning of civilization. You all know proper skin protection is the best thing you can do for the health of your skin today and slow down the effects of aging tomorrow. In today's era, changing weather with excessive heat or humidity increases risk of damage due to UV rays, which makes skin more prone to wrinkles, melasma, and skin cancer. We know that sunscreen is valuable from a skin cancer and sun damage perspective, as well as something that helps prevent fine lines and wrinkles. According to survey, 67% of people in India are not using sunscreen as daily skincare routine. Several things about sunscreen that we, we people are not aware of that makes us to not including sunscreen as an integral part of skincare routine. So to help you inform today, we are here to know more about sunscreen in skincare regime. So let's connect today with our skin expert, Dr. Astha Chawla, based at Delhi. Dr. Astha is a qualified dermatologist with vast experience in the field of clinical dermatology and facial aesthetics. She cuts through the clutter with evidence-based treatments for skin issues across all age groups. Doctor has extensive experience in a wide range of laser treatments. Her expertise and area of interest lies in enhancing facial features with the use of approval facial fillers and Botox. Doctor, first of all, welcome to today's platform. Our first question for you would be, should I wear sunscreen every day? Many people think that sunscreen should not be used in summers or afternoon time. Is it true? Hi, thank you for having me. So, yes, of course, sunscreen should be used every day. Now, why you should use it every day? See, although the word says sunscreen, yes, it is guarding you from the sun rays. But the main action of a sunscreen is to protect you from the UV rays which reach the surface of the earth. And unfortunately, irrespective of it being a cloudy day or a rainy day or a sunny day, UV rays are still going to reach the surface of the earth. So on a daily basis, yes, you should wear your sunscreen because it's not just the tan that you're being protected from. You need to protect yourself from the UVA and the UVB rays which reach the surface of the earth. Right. Uh, doctor, what does SPF level mean and why should uh, we know about it while choosing the sunscreen? Okay, so let's just get down to the basics a little bit. So when we talk about UV rays, there are mainly two types of UV rays which reach the surface, which is UVA and UVB. Now UVB is something which is responsible for your acute sunburn, is responsible for your photo induced uh, cancer and UVA is something which would lead to photo aging as well as skin cancer. Now, when we talk about SPF, traditionally SPF is called as sun protection factor, but it is actually sun burn protection factor, which is an index to tell you how effective the sunscreen is against the UVB rays. So, if a person is using SPF between 2 to 15, which is usually considered low, uh, and if a person is wearing a sunscreen which has an SPF around 30 to 50, which is considered high, then the person who's wearing 30 to 50 is getting a much higher protection from UVB rays. So SPF alone does not tell you if it is broad spectrum. It will only tell you how effective it is against UVB. Typically, a SPF of 15 protects you from 93% of the UVB rays. Uh, SPF of 30 protects you against 97% of the UVB rays. And an SPF 50 would block around 98% of the UVB rays. That is why we say if you're in a tropical country like India, an SPF of 30 or above is something that you should opt for. Right. Well, that was a great knowledge today that we have got from our doctor who has who is here with us today. Doctor, there is another term which I think all of us would want to know. What is booth star rating and PA rating mentioned on the sunscreen? Okay, so we spoke about UVB. What SPF is to UVB, we have booth star rating and PA factor. 
which are basically indices for the UVA rays, as in how effective your sunscreen is against guarding against UVA rays. So boot star traditionally had been used in the United Kingdom, which is actually a ratio of the UVA absorbance of the product to the UVB absorbance of the product. So it is traditionally, if you uh, read a sunscreen label, it would be boot star three, boot star four, or boot star five. Anything above a boot star three is considered to be very good for a good UVA protection. Now, how boot star was also for UVA? PA factor is also for UVA. The only difference being that PA factor was introduced by the Japanese Cosmetics Association. This is also an index for UVA rays. It will basically tell you as to how long can a person stand in the sun without getting persistently pigmented or can get melasma if they have used a sunscreen as compared to if they have not used a sunscreen. So it is traditionally labeled as PA plus 1, PA plus 2, PA plus 3, PA plus 4. To give you a rough idea, PA plus 1 would be if you're standing in the sun for 2 to 4 hours, you will be protected from melasma, which is a continuous exposure. 2 plus would be 4 to 8 hours. PA 3 plus would be 8 to 16 hours. And PA 4 plus would be more than 16 hours. So any sunscreen which has a PA 3 plus or more is a good enough sunscreen for UVA protection. Right. Doctor, also how much quantity of sunscreen should be used? And how often should we uh, reapply it? Okay, so uh, when we talk about the face and neck, you need at least 3 ml, which is roughly more than half a tablespoon. And if you look at arms, again, you need 3 ml, which is more than half a tablespoon. If you talk about the legs, each leg should have at least more than uh, one tablespoon, which is roughly 6 ml. And likewise, for the front and back, it should be at least 6 ml. And if you roughly want to quantify, so that would be two finger lengths of sunscreen that you should be using or scientifically two milligram per centimeter square of the body surface area. And when you talk okay. about the reapplication of sunscreen, so ideally it would be between two to three hours if you are uh, indulging in an outdoor activity or if you have a profession which entitles you to stay outdoors, then please repeat it two to three hourly. If not, if you're indoors and if you've applied it once very well, it's good enough. You can just have one more repeat application after around four to five hours also. Right. Doctor, how is the effectiveness of sunscreen measured? Okay, so when we talk about the effectiveness of sunscreen, we're basically looking at all these uh, indices that we have spoken about. Like for UVB, there is SPF. For UVA, there is... Uh, PA factor and boot star rating and if the sunscreen is broad spectrum or not. So broad spectrum sunscreen is something which has a protection for UVA plus UVB, which is uh, what is very commonly known. But there is something called as a critical wavelength of a sunscreen, which is basically the wavelength below which all the UV rays would be absorbed by that sunscreen, which is typically around 370 nanometer for a good sunscreen. So if your sunscreen qualifies these criteria of having a good SPF above 30, a good PA rating of three or more, a good uh, PA factor of three plus or more, and has a critical wavelength of uh, more than 370 nanometers, that means it's good and it's quite effective. Along with that, there are a few other things which we can read on a sunscreen label, like if the sunscreen is water resistant. Now, water resistant would be that even if you have taken two subsequent dips in water for 20 minutes each, it should not lose its efficacy. That is what a water-resistant sunscreen is supposed to mean. And if the sunscreen reads as very water-resistant, that means it should allow you at least four immersions of 20 minutes each. So it gives you protection in water for at least 80 minutes. And in the US, water-resistant and very water-resistant sunscreens also qualify for being called as sweat resistant sunscreens right uh, doctor also what are the types of sunscreens available okay so there's a lot of media hype on uh, you know mineral sunscreens chemical sunscreens so broadly speaking there are two there is mineral sunscreen which is also called as the physical or the inorganic sunscreen 
and the chemical sunscreens which are the organic sunscreen now the basic difference between the two is a chemical sunscreen would ideally absorb the uv rays and convert it into heat energy what a physical or mineral sunscreen would do is uh, apart from absorbing it would also absorb yes it would also reflect a little bit of uv rays as well as scatter a little bit of uv rays so there are certain filters mineral filters and chemical filters your mineral filters would be zinc oxide or titanium dioxide iron oxide your talc kaolin all these are mineral filters and your chemical filters would be paba or something related to benzophenones salicylates cinnamates all these are chemical filters and if you ask me which one is a better sunscreen out of the two i would say a combination of mineral and uh, chemical sunscreen is great however in individuals who have uh, very sensitive skin or suffer from some sort of eczema or say if it's a pregnant female lactating female then i would go for a safer option which yes is a mineral sunscreen only downside being sometimes mineral sunscreen leave behind a whitish cast which usually the chemical sunscreens do not do right so uh well this is the most problematic thing when it comes to sunscreen choosing the sunscreen how does one choose the best sunscreen for their skin okay so see the best sunscreen is what you are going to apply on a daily basis that might be different for you that might be different for me that might be different for someone who has a different skin type right so if you are someone who has dry skin type formulation of sunscreen is also very important then use a cream sunscreen which also has a little bit of hydrating agents in it say hyaluronic acid or has vitamin e if you are someone who has an acne prone skin you would rather opt for a gel or a lotion form of a sunscreen which is oil free it is non comedogenic so these are formulations but your standard um, effective measures which is basically your spf which i have spoken about pa factor boot star rating your critical wavelength your water resistant all of it still should be there in the sunscreen how to choose the exact one if you are someone who does not like using makeup then probably you can opt for a tinted sunscreen also so only the formulation is something that is going to change for you or for me or for anyone but these basic parameters should still be there on your sunscreen label right uh doctor is there any different sunscreen for acne patients as you men mentioned there uh, we can choose a different sunscreen for acne prone skin so are there any different sunscreen for acne patients as well so usually for um, acne patients opt for a sunscreen which mentions that it is non comedogenic there is no oil in it try to stay away from sunscreens which have vitamin e in it then there are a few sunscreens which also have addition of uh, zinc pca in it which is basically your zinc pyrolidone carboxylic acid which itself is a sebum regulator is also an antibacterial agent so prevents the acne as well so it is giving you the advantage of a sunscreen along with an agent which can probably decrease your acne a bit so in my opinion that would be a sunscreen which is specifically for acne prone patients right uh, doctor also let us know which sunscreens are best for the children and infants okay so um speaking about infants we usually do not recommend sunscreen below the age of 6 months however if above the age of 6 months a uh, uh, infant or a child can go for a mineral sunscreen and it should at least have an spf of 30 it should be broad spectrum giving you a coverage of uv a plus uv b it should be non comedogenic very very important it should be water resistant because children would usually go and play outside and they would be sweating so you don't want the efficacy of the sunscreen to go down there and one more important thing is for children and for infants try to stay away from spray formulations because these formulations can you know get inside and can interfere with their respiratory activities so we don't want any right. spray formulations for kids on the face right so doctor as you have already mentioned for children you do not suggest yeah we the doctors normally do not suggest spray formulations so which uh, which can be the better formulation normally for the adults spray cream gel lotion which can be the better formulation 
Okay, so according to body part, like if you are using the sunscreen for your face and neck, a cream if you have uh, dry skin, and a gel formulation if you have oily skin, or even a lotion formulation if you have normal to oily skin can be used. However, if you ask me, what would you apply on the body? You obviously cannot apply a small cream or a gel on the entire body. So then lotions come in very handy. It's very easy to apply, and the spreadability is good. and uh, even a spray works really well for the body because um, if you're applying a lotion you might not be able to reach certain parts of your body say if you're trying to apply it on the back so then spray formulations become very handy if you're going to the beach and you want to just spray it before going so then spray formulations are really good but otherwise cream gel lotion are more effective if you talk about the face and neck Also, doctor, I know there are a lot of viewers right now who would be thinking or who has such sort of mentality who are thinking that, uh, what's the requirement of putting sunscreen? Why don't we can why can't we just cover up the face or the body parts and then move out? So, how can we elaborate the effect of not applying sunscreen? Okay. so that's that's a very valid question because uh, whenever we ask the patient to apply sunscreen you know we always also tell them that try to have your physical measures intact which is basically uh, if you're stepping out in the sun try to wear full sleeves clothes or try to probably wear a wide brimmed hat try to wear shades which have uv protection now these are all supplemental measures to a sunscreen that you're using why individually they cannot qualify as a good sunscreen measure is because there will be no uniformity one day you are wearing a full sleeve the other day you are wearing something which is less coverage one day you are wearing something which is extremely dark which is probably absorbing uv rays but the other day uh, you are wearing some light clothes which will probably not be filtering out the uv rays that well so if you talk about clothing there is something called as upf like spf is sun protection factor so upf is a uh, uv protection factor which is basically an index that is used for clothing as in how much of both uva and uvb can be absorbed by your clothes so that upf varies widely depending upon what uh, color of clothes you are wearing if you are wearing a dark or bright color clothes that has much higher upf as compared to something which is white or pastel or light in shade if you are wearing a fabric which is very tightly woven like probably denim or polyester that is something which is which has much more upf as compared to a cloth or a fabric which is not that well knit then if your clothing is wet or if your clothing is stretched all these factors will change your upf so on a day to day basis you cannot be wearing the same thing so you do not have a uniform sun protection that is why a sun protection in the form of a sunscreen becomes very essential and these physical measures of wearing fully covered clothes or clothes which give you enough coverage act as a supplemental measure to it not as a stand alone uh, you know measure to protect against the uv rays right uh doctor also there are a lot of patients who thinks that uh, abhi to aur office jana nahi hota hai work from home chal raha hai to sunscreen lagane ka zarurat nahi hai so is um sitting in front of screen also you know somehow hampers our skin is sunscreen required then as well so if you are sitting indoors and there is no direct uv exposure and you're just uh, you know in front of your screens so there would be some sort of uh, you know high energy uh, visible light which would be coming in which is basically called as the blue rays so the sunscreens that we get these days lot of them have this protection against the blue rays and not just alone uv rays so even if you are sitting indoors it is protecting you from this high energy visible wavelength light that is coming from your screen so although you are not going to get tanned inside but then these wavelengths can eventually affect your skin health by causing photo aging causing fine lines causing wrinkles starting at an early age so yes wearing a sunscreen indoors is also a good idea however then you need not you know repeat it every 2 to 3 hourly as compared to if you have an outdoor profession right uh, also doctor can sunscreen be applied with makeup as well absolutely and in fact it should be applied with makeup especially when you're doing it in the daytime so an ideal way would be once you have washed your face and once you have prepped your skin after applying a moisturizer apply a layer of sunscreen over your moisturizer 
over which you can do your makeup i know there are a lot of uh, brands these days in the market which have spf uh, in their makeups incorporated or there are some sort of bb cream cc creams which would have a certain amount of spf mentioned on it but that alone is not going to give you enough protection why because say if we say a good quantity of sunscreen for the face and neck is 3 ml you are not going to use 3 ml of foundation on your face and plus this foundation also has other things beside spf so you're not using an adequate dose of spf once you're putting it with your makeup so it's always better that you have an intact layer of sunscreen before you put your makeup on once you're putting makeup during the day time and right. in case so uh, you know you want to reapply say your sunscreen over your makeup if it's been more than 2 hours more than 3 hours you want to reapply then for the reapplication you can use some sort of uh, loose powders which have spf in them or some sort of you know powder brushes these days come which have spf so then they are good to you know just top up the sunscreen but do not skip a sunscreen altogether if you're using makeup right uh doctor uh, also uh, what are the do's and don'ts while using a sunscreen okay so the main do's would be please use a sunscreen daily uh use it at least 30 minutes before stepping out of the house reapply it 3 hourly if you're working outdoors make sure you're not just using sunscreen on the face you also need to put it on your upper neck make sure you're covering your uh, area around your nose and ears really well do not skip a lip sunscreen we see a lot of cases these days which come with photo aged lips and dark pigmented lips one of the major reasons for that is uh, unprotected sun exposure so a lip spf is also extremely important so and if you are into outdoor sports like if you're swimming then reapplication becomes very essential and uh, yeah so these are the do's and um, as far as the don'ts are considered one thing that i've commonly come across is lot of patients mixing their moisturizers with sunscreen so see if you're again mixing your moisturizer with your sunscreen you're diluting it a b you're not using enough quantity of the sunscreen so you are essentially compromising on the efficacy of the sunscreen so sunscreen should be used as a separate step and not as a mix with the moisturizer or with your makeup that has to be a stand alone thing next thing is uh, once you are washing your sunscreen and if you are using a tinted sunscreen try to do a uh, double cleanse use an oil based cleanser first and then use a water based cleanser so that the sunscreen is properly removed from the face and the other don'ts for your sunscreen would be do not use an expired sunscreen very important and yeah that's about it Okay. So, doctor, while you are following our skincare regime, what are the steps of uh, you know application? Can you please uh, elaborate that as well? Yeah. So, with um, you know the hype of K beauty routines and J beauty routines, we see there are around ten steps or twelve steps being uh, followed. I don't think so. That's a very intelligent point. If you see how long can you follow it. you would probably be able to do it you know for a small amount of time but not on a very long term basis the basic rationale beh- behind layering products should be you always start from a product which is thinnest in consistency and then go about layering it with products which are thicker in consistency because if you put a thick one before a thin one then the thin one is not going to get absorbed um in general terms a face wash should be a first step second step in the morning if you're using some sort of a brightening serum or an antioxidant serum like vitamin c serum that can be your second step which can then be followed by a moisturizer and then the last step should be your sunscreen at night again your face wash is your first step or your cleanser your second step could be your eye cream and then your night serum if you're using a hydrating or probably if you're using a treatment serum or an anti aging serum like retinol which then has to be followed up by a moisturizer and in case you want to use a sleep mask over it that goes the last so it has to be thinnest uh, doc- to thickest no matter how many products you are using right 
uh, well that was very helpful and now uh, we will move on with the questions which our viewers are asking us uh, the first question comes from shivani shivani asks can pigmentation and freckles reduced with use of sunscreen and which type of good for dry which type is good for dry and also for oily skin to reduce above as per uh, indian weathers Okay, so using a sunscreen, if you have freckles or sunspots, is a very good idea because A, that is going to make sure that these freckles or sunspots do not increase in number and they do not darken with time. But if you ask me, will a sunscreen alone reduce your freckles? Something that is already formed, sunscreen is not going to treat it. Sunscreen is a preventive product and cannot treat your freckles which are already formed that would require some sort of depigmenting uh, treatments in the form of topical applications along with in clinic procedures like you switched lasers and along with that yes you have to use a very good sunscreen so that the condition does not increase in number or worsen in color and if you have somebody who has dry skin please opt for a cream formulation you could also opt for sunscreens which have added vitamin c e and hyaluronic acid in them and if you're someone who has an oily skin try to use a sunscreen which has no oil has the label non comedogenic or if it also has some sort of sebum regulator that would work really well for you okay uh well, the next question comes from Akansha Puri, who asks, "How often do I often do you use sunscreen, and what is the SPF of the product?" I think Doctor has already mentioned, but do you want to repeat that again? So, um, in a tropical country like India, please use an SPF which is thirty plus and above, and try to repeat it three hourly if you're outdoors. If you're indoors, a one good application of at least three ml for the face and neck is going to cover you for a good amount of time. The next question, doctor, is from Deepak Saxena, who asks, what specific skin concern or goals would you like to address with your skincare routine? Uh, I'm sorry, can you please come again? Yes. What specific skin concerns or goals would you like to address with your skincare routine? So, uh, depending upon what skincare routine you are using, uh, you can address different concerns. Like if you're trying to address dullness or if you're trying to address, you know, a little pigmentation, mild sort of pigmentation, then you can incorporate a vitamin C, a niacinamide serum. At night, you can incorporate a glycolic-based serum or even a retinol-based serum or a tranexamic acid-based serum and uh, if you are someone who has uh, no pigmentation is just looking for a hydrating routine you can opt for something which has hyaluronic acid in it either a hyaluronic based cream or a hyaluronic based serum and at night you can also incorporate a hyaluronic based mask even ceramides work really well for individuals who have dry skin and are looking for hydration and uh, you can if you are uh, targeting anti-aging then your routine should have a retinol or it can have even peptides or some sort of stem cell based creams. That's actually right. a very wide question. So I had to answer it really quickly. So I just told you the three, four main concerns. Right. Uh, doctor, our next uh, viewer, Ajit, seems to be very worried. He asks, uh, how much time should I dedicate to my skincare routine daily? If you're dedicating five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night, you're doing really great. That's more than enough right. that you need to put on three steps. Right. Um, well, the next question is from Ria Sathi who asks, Doctor, can you please tell me ek din mein kitni baar sunscreen lagani chahiye? Uh, you have to reapply it every three hours. So if you are an early riser, if you start at 8 a.m. till almost 3 p.m., you would have covered around three to four applications. However, if you start late, you would be covering two applications. So totally depends upon what your routine is, but an ideal time interval is three hour of reapplication of sunscreens. Uh, the next question is from Shalini Buddhi Raja, who asks, simple skincare routine for daily use, morning and night. Um, depending upon what the age, age of the patient, if you are somewhere between uh, your teens till 20s, a good moisturizer, a good sunscreen is more than enough. You do not require anything else. 
between 20 to 30, I would advise add a hydrating agent like hyaluronic acid to your uh, skin routine. Above 30, you can add ceramide. If you are somewhere between 35 to 40, you can look at anti-aging and start adding retinol and vitamin C to your routine. And if you're above 40, along with retinol and vitamin C, you can also add peptides and stem cells to your skin routine. Right. The next question uh, is from Pooja Sharma, who asks, are there any skin affecting medications? Um, sorry, are there any skin affecting medications? There are a lot of medications which affect your skin. Um, there are anti-anxiety medications which do show up a lot of acne on your face and your trunk and your back. So they definitely affect your skin. Then there are medications which you probably say if you're using as uh, anti-cancer medications, they can give you a lot of hair fall. They give you pigmentation. Oral contraceptive pills are one of the major culprits when we talk about pigmentation on the face or melasma. So all these medications, yes, they do affect your face. And if you're taking uh, even, you know, uh, medicines to plan your pregnancy or uh, conception medicines, they are also known to cause acne. So all these medications, yes, they do cause acne. If you talk broadly about the category, these would be anti-convulsants. These would be your hormonal medications and your anti-cancer medications, which predominantly affect the skin. These are the ones which affect the skin in a bad way. And then there are obviously medicines which affect the skin in a good way also. Right. Uh, also, also, doctor, has stress uh, any relation with our skin? Uh, do we need to get control over stress as well to have a healthy skin? Absolutely. Stress is one of the major deterrents when, you know, patients come and ask, uh, doctor, I'm 20 and I don't have any glow on my face. Stress is a very important factor which plays a role not only on how your skin looks, but also how your hair looks and how your entire body behaves. So having a good control over that, although it's easy to be said, is, I know is a little difficult, but having a good routine, a good sleep cycle, a good eating pattern, a good amount of water intake daily helps you combat that stress. And if you're working out, that helps you combat your stress and the effects show up on the skin and they really work wonders then. Right. Doctor, well, it was a very, very informative session. Uh, I believe all the viewers who are watching us right now, they are taking a lot from this live today. Uh, before Thank we you. leave, doctor, any take-home advice or note for our viewers who are watching us right now? The only take-home message is please do not be afraid of using sunscreen and don't think sunscreen is only for you know girls even boys should be using sunscreen kids should be using sunscreens elderly should be using sunscreens and it should be used on a daily basis without fail and please incorporate into your routine as you have incorporated brushing your teeth i feel it's something that is lacking from the indian mindset that a sunscreen is important so please use it wisely use it daily and use it um, for good skin health. Well, that was uh, Dr. Asta Shavla for us. Thank you once again, Doctor, for your valuable time. Uh, and you. it was a very informative session for our viewers. It was great to hear from you and we look forward to many more such sessions in the coming time. And thank, thank you, you viewers for your excellent participation today. Uh, stay connected to our beautiful Spotless Skin page. Thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy.